We're coming to our last episode of 2013, episode 48. Can't believe we made it this far, but it has been a lot of fun along the way. Um, but I wanted to talk about really what this podcast is about and what it means and what it means to the community. And what we are doing is the reason we get volunteers... Um, like Alan and Susan and Pavel and Sean and Jackie and everybody else who helps out week after week with their volunteer hours is because we think that what's happening downtown is a really special community. It's not so much something that you could put on a blueprint and give to an architect. It's the kind of thing that you really have to get to know the people and you have to understand the people that are looking out for you, that really trying to build a community around help. And that's uh, something that we try to demonstrate each week by stepping back from the minute details of our everyday life and trying to see uh, the kind of growth that we're having as a community community. Um, so one of the cool things about this podcast is it always comes with free booze. So Woo! I am happy, yes. <laughs> right. And the man who paid for that booze deserves a special hand. And that is Matt. We've got him from Collective Zoo. So thank you very much for paying for the beer. Hey guys. Our, our pleasure. Yes. Okay. So you guys are a Vegas-based digital media and event planning company. And you've got local throughout this entire key point. So tell me a little <laughs> bit about uh, the history of you guys and what you're planning on doing for New Year's. Yeah. We are, we're are Collective Zoo. Uh, we are a locally owned and operated company by three Las Vegas locals. Uh, we throw parties for locals at local venues. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, you're right. Local again and again and again. Um, we own and operate uh, a digital media company uh, on top of that where we have our publication on www.collectivezoo.com um, and that's really just to kind of highlight what's going on with our events uh, as well as uh, events that we think are cool and that locals should know about in the community. So tell, tell me about New Year's. I know you have a huge event coming up. Yeah, we do. Um, it's actually right outside our window. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's our take on HBO's hit series uh, Boulevard or Boardwalk Empire. Anybody seen that? Anybody? Well, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a great show. I'm not sure what season it's in right now, um, but we have kind of made that spin for Vegas locals to Boulevard Empire. Um, it's going to be a mobster-themed event, and we thought no better place than downtown right here in your guys' backyard with the Mob Museum. Right. So that's really cool because that's in walking distance from here, which is always good for getting super drunk. It's awesome. Like we'll we'll yeah. keep you guys off the streets, keep you safe. <laughs> but, you know, even if you're not drunk, it looks like a really fun event. So I hope people check it out. Yeah. And uh, so they can learn more about you and every and this project and everything else you guys are doing at CollectiveZoo.com. And then you guys got the Twitter handle, too, CollectiveZoo. So you did a good job with that, just spelled normally. And then uh, I heard there might be a discount for yeah we have members? actually put together a special discount on our new year's eve party uh the promo code is going to be downtown podcast i don't know if you guys can edit that in later can you yeah, make that yeah. can you make that oh like here? magically show up yeah da like downtown oh, podcast can we do that? you're adding like you're adding like an hour onto my editing time but we can we can make it happen yeah. i think we can make it happen and what that what that promo code is going to get everyone it's going to get ten dollars off of all the ticket types and then for every ticket that's actually bought under that ticket or that promo code we're going to donate ten dollars back to the downtown podcast so hopefully it. we can pay for beer again very cool very cool all right well thank you very much for coming out man Thanks give a big us, round of applause and we will uh, see you soon i can't wait to check out the mob museum on new year's yeah, be a lot of fun. Thank, you guys. thank you yeah appreciate it They're awesome. <laughs> giving them a lot of beer. Like, they are into it. It's a good way to ring in the end of the year. No, right? it is. It is. We've got a great crowd. Okay, well, speaking of that, you know, just make sure that uh, everybody who comes on Thursdays, we're not going to be here next Thursday or the following Thursday. So December 26th to January 2nd, uh, we're going to celebrate Christmas, and then we're afraid we'll be too party after New Year's. Yeah, let so. us sleep in on the 2nd. Don't come knocking on that morning. <laughs> but here's what's very, very cool. Have you guys seen the Inspire Theater being built around here? Yeah. Did you see that? Okay. Uh, so we have the special, special CES episode, which will be coming back for our next episode on January 9th, actually in the Inspire Theater. So we're going to be taking a trip away from um, the Tiki Cake headquarters, and we're going to go into the very cool Inspire Theater. I'm so, so excited, because yes. it's going to be one of the first events that's held in the Inspire Theater, theater, right? And we've never been able to get outside the Tiki Cake headquarters as much as it's awesome here. <laughs> right, yeah. So I'm super excited. Yeah, so, what's, so especially for everyone who's seeing it built, like um, this is going to be the one of the first opportunities to actually go in there and see what the actual building is like. And you can RSVP just like you can every Sunday or every uh, Thursday for our podcast.
podcast and you can go for free. But you'll also have the advantage of being part of the Passport to Downtown. So this is um, Karen Hartline's event from Reinventing Events. So they have a whole series of stuff built for CES and they're going to be bringing people from CES downtown. And the podcast is going to be one of the shining moments. You know, they're going to be able to see our community. So it'll be really cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to kind of hit the big time now, and we hope to see everybody there when we come back on January 9th. So um, passport to downtown.com is where you guys want to sign up. And even if you're not coming to the podcast, that's where you want to go for all the CES stuff that the downtown mm -hmm. project is kind of tying together. So I'm excited to see downtown being more integrated with CES this time. Yeah, wow. I'm excited to be the Inspire Theater. This is going to be amazing. So cool. Um, so who do we have first? So our first events, we're talking about a pretty awesome juice bar starting up with a bit of a twist, huh? So we have ah, Shane here to tell right. us about that. Before I got into uh, doing this juice bar downtown, I had uh, the Las Vegas Wellness Institute where, um, where we had people come in and before they come in and go through these classes and detoxes, uh, they'd put their hand on this scanner that they use in a lot of uh, doctor's offices as opposed to doing a blood test and it gives you an accurate account of your micronutrient deficiencies. And it's actually called a Zyto scan. And so what they would sell off of it, they actually use it for also selling uh, multi-level companies, their, their supplements, their oils, what have you. So I called the company and I said, uh, is there any way that um, you could take off all the supplements and the oils and put fruits and vegetables on there? And they said, well, we've never heard of that, but if you can, <laughs> you're, you're gonna actually have to build the program. So I do have, um, I have a degree in nutrition and I've been working in the nutrition field for about nine years. And so I was able to build a program so for any so situation cool. that would come up um, that some, where someone put their hand on, so say they're low in vitamin C, on the screen, oranges, tangerines, bell peppers, anything high in vitamin C will pop up on the screen. Nice. And then it goes down the line. And so they would get a printout of whatever they got during that consultation, and they go up to the juice bar, and then the mixologist can make them a drink for their biological needs. Huh. And so, cool. so the idea is to drink that drink high in all those vitamins throughout the entire month, and then to put their hand on it again and see how the levels have all gone out. I love that. See, and uh, yeah, it's on Carson. And the name of it is? Gr uh, grassroots. Okay, and, and my partner websites, is, uh, URLs. No, no what, we're, that's all being built. Oh, right so they've built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you this gotta get the machine, get the machine working the machine first, right? first, yeah, foremost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, right. But, but I'm excited. Maybe we'll go in, we'll put our hands on a scanner, it's gonna read our micronutrients, right. print us out a thing, and we'll get a custom juice and start we fixing our But we also have, health, there's a lot of cool stuff. So say the scanner wasn't gonna be there, but in every single juice, what I've done is I've gone out of my way to source the top superfoods from around the world. Superfoods that you would not be able to find in Whole Foods or any other place. So when you order a drink, every single drink is going to be made with five flavors, healthy chocolate, sweet greens, ancient delight, or super berry. And each one has some of the most powerful foods on the planet mixed in with traditional fruits and vegetables you can get from a grocery store. And we have a great uh, cold press program where you can go on a liver detox, skin detox. And it's really, it's called the Grassroots Interactive Juice Bar. So <laughs> the interactive part is that um, we, we get to learn our customers. And it's not just a juice bar that you go up and order a drink, but it's a juice bar that That's super probably personal. cater to you yeah yeah well, i'm awesome. really excited for it so yeah. i'm excited you came to talk to us about it and i can't wait for it to open up yeah thank you very much cool. thanks cool. shane awesome. thank you next up we have kelly from move line now i have actually <coughs> given the move line company a bit of a go recently i yeah. moved from henderson to downtown and um, i gave you guys a call and your move captains in particular were kind of the thing i was most excited about seeing and uh, shout out to michael c who took really really good care of me during the move. it was super cool <laughs> But uh, you guys are looking for more move captains, I guess. Yeah, we are. We're looking for more move captains. We're looking for move coordinators. And we're looking for pretty much every position in our company <laughs> because we're growing so fast That's and having really exciting. such a great time. Um, so yeah, move captains are sort of um, a, special be a special breed of sales and customer service. So mm -hmm. they work with you all the way through the process and, and kind of consult with you on your move and help you understand what your options are. Uh -huh. And then um, just kind of stay close to you as you go through the process and book the move and work with the moving company to make sure that they show up on time and they bring in all the materials and all of the equipment that they need for the job. So and it goes very, very smoothly. I can speak from experience. So Michael was really nice because my place was like a bomb had hit it because I was <laughs> trying to pack stuff up. We see he it all the time. He was totally gracious about it. Yeah, he told me that he sees that all the time. Yeah, so. I mean, you, like our whole 
our whole purpose is to make the move less stressful, not to judge you for your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, like, he seemed really excited to help me out. It seems like that would be a really fun position, especially being a move captain, right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun because you, we, so one of the things is we spend a lot of time video chatting with our customers, mm -hmm. and uh, you get to know them and why they're moving, and um, people just have really cool stories to tell about what opportunity they're chasing or what's going on in their life, and it's a lot of fun to interact with them and then be able to help them in a really, really, like, term like turmoil and tumultuous times. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it must cool. be really nice to smooth that over for them. Yeah. Cool. So how can people get in contact with you guys if they're interested in any of these positions that you have open? So uh, we have a website that's moveline.com slash careers mm -hmm. where you can check out all of the open positions from design to marketing to move captains, coordinators, engineering, everything is open. Uh, and then you can also email us at careers at moveline.com with a resume and a cover letter and we'll check you out. Awesome. Cool. And what's what's the furthest that you've ever moved someone? Do, do you know that off the top of your head? Uh, I'm not sure if it's the furthest, but the first international move that we did was to uh, to Scotland. Uh, wow. And so we had, um, we had these shirts where we printed off all of the locations of the first hundred moves that we did, and it was uh -huh. all of them on the U.S., and then we had to put the... Oh, you just like one over here on the side? On yeah. the side. This, it's not this That's one, cool. obviously, but um, that, was, that was one of the... the best memories of the company because oh. it's the first time somebody reached out and they were like, do you think you can do this move to Scotland? And we're like, we're not sure. But yes. And then we did it and it was great and she had an awesome, awesome time. That's, That's an awesome. excellent challenge. Yeah, yeah you cool. guys are going to have a lot of growth. I think it's a great company. So Thanks. Yeah. Well, I would certainly be spreading the word and yeah, again, well done to all your move captains. Thanks. I'll tell Michael that you said hi. Awesome. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, and we have one last event to, to cover and it's just a really quick one. But remember, we've had local motors on the oh, show before. Yeah. And, uh, uh, local motors. They're so cool because they're like these crowdfunded vehicles, right? And normally they're motorized. Um, and this time they have a new vehicle that they've designed and it's based on like the classic cruiser so it's a modern take on a, a classic bicycle which seems really cool and again it was designed by one of their members of the local motors community and they built one of the prototypes in their micro factory oh, which so is cool. really cool so i'm just super excited that they moved here in the first place yeah and, and you've been down to check out their facility right yeah, here right yeah it's so cool with the airplane awesome. fuselage looking interior and that all those coffee machines you get coffee it. for a year in there right and yes. i'm a huge coffee snob so i'm always like <laughs> tempted to run a the road from Zappos and get myself a cup there. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know, they had the uh, tech cocktail brunch there this Saturday, right. and um, well, I went there and I got, I was lucky enough to get walked around by, I think Gina's here, right? Yeah, this she, she yeah. Yeah, thank you for walking me around. So she, she walked around Sarah and I, and we got a chance to see all the cool things that they're building, but mm -hmm. then I immediately went online and looked at their other facilities, and they just make so many cool vehicles. I mean, it's just like everything you'd want as a 10 year old. Like, you yeah, just play yeah. around with all these cool, like, dune buggy type things. Right, right. It's like yeah. taking, taking car manufacturing out of the kind of the boring industry that it seems stuck in yeah. letting people actually have their say from from the comfort of their own home on what it should do so yeah i think that's a really cool initiative yeah so the the latest um cruiser their bicycle is actually um being crowdfunded so they're on crowdhoster.com and if you wanted to fund them you can give anything from a dollar to um almost thirty eight hundred dollars which will actually get you able to own a cruiser which oh, is okay. super cool so uh, again definitely go on crowdhoster.com and support our local motors local business okay all right, well, thank you guys for coming out to the uh, new section. episode of the year we actually are giving you advance notice of all these really cool events because we're focusing on new year's eve parties and there's no better town to celebrate new year's eve than no. in vegas right guys <laughs> yeah for new year's? <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're going to be giving you a selection of different things you can do and i'm sure there's something uh in it for everybody there's some kind of event that will suit you so the first thing we're going to do is uh is concentrate on, on uh, the downtown um experiences for new year's eve now, last year, I heard a rumor that you were in your pajamas pretty early on in New Year's Eve. <laughs> that was in, well, no, for a pajama party. For a pajama oh, party. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, but so, yeah, so last year we did the, Ticket Cake was helping with the um, Fremont Street Experience, okay. which they block off everything that's down there. 25,000 people is amazing, but that was work. So as soon as I got off, <laughs> we jumped in our pajamas and went down to the... 
down to a place and partied with some animals and people and okay. it was crazy yeah <laughs> well that detail was like was pretty important i seriously thought you just went home and we're gonna do no the no job that was the un- that was the unicorn party if you've heard of oh, it but yeah and with the the llama and everything right. like that. okay they turned a llama into a okay. unicorn for anybody that's, that's wondering how weird it gets for new year's around here <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun well continuing with that theme since you did mention the fremont street experience um that's coming around again this year so it's called the fremont street experience downtown countdown New Year's Eve event and uh, if you're sick of seeing and hearing Bon Jovi on the big vi- Viva Vision um, <laughs> yes. screen you're actually in for a treat because we're going to be taking him off the screen for a night yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the joke with my friends oh, is he's, poor bon Jovi. he's like hope he's not watching Bon Jovi this. oh you yeah. might be <laughs> <laughs> Um, So just some further info, like Dylan said, it's like a 25,000 person event. They closed down Fremont Street from I think like 9th till Fremont. Right, yeah, this is the largest outdoor party in Las Vegas. I think even in North America. It's really, really big. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be showing um, really cool stuff such as nine hours of nonstop entertainment on multiple stages. So you're going to see people like uh, Papa Roach, Loverboy, Vince Neil, um, some really cool local bands such as the Blackjacks, Clockwood, Kid Hollywood, Monroe and arena so definitely get down if you like music and of course the viva vision screen is going to be showing a year in review for 2013 so again like no bon jovi but there'll be an awesome year in review that you can watch and then when we actually get to the countdown there's going to be mayor mayor goodman is going to be doing the countdown and of course that countdown will be showing on the screen as well so i think that'll be a super special event and if really big noisy crowds are your thing which they're not mine then yeah you should definitely get down for this because it'll be a very kind of um, awesome experience, I think, for sure. See the guy in the green fingers, like he's just itching to like put it up. He's like, yeah, he's like, he's ready to party for I New Year's. I think this guy wants to get down there. <laughs> cool. So, awesome. um, also downtown, if the big crowds aren't your thing, you can join a little crowd at Lady Sylvia's. Lady Sylvia's is going to have a really awesome event with a champagne toast, live music, handcrafted cocktails to ring in the new year. And uh, it's really cheap to get in. It's only $10 on ticketcake.com. And um, that gets you your champagne and everything like that. And, and access to the live performance. So I think that's kind of more my scene. I think I'll be chilling oh, yeah. out on the really nice lounges there, looking at all the books on the walls and everything. I think that sounds really nice. A good way to bring in the year. So again, you can go and take a cake for that, and it starts obviously on New Year's Eve night. How about up on the Strip? Anything going on up there? So it, it is actually a really good place to uh, check out some New Year's Eve events too. You're very right. So on the Strip, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, the whole range of really awesome concerts that are going to be going on. So there's a lot of bands that are coming into town and giving up their New Year's Eve night out to uh, to actually work for you guys and, and show you a good time. First up, we have Grammy Award winning band Maroon 5. They're actually going to be at Mandalay Bay on New Year's Eve, so definitely check that out. Uh, Bruno Mars is going to be at the Cosmopolitan and at the Chelsea, um, and that starts at 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Britney Spears, she's starting her right. highly anticipated residency in Las Vegas, for those who are huge fans. Britney! <laughs> Jeez, oh, what oh, jeez. So, uh, there's a few in the audience that want to see her, so I'm here to tell you she's going to be at Planet Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, any Celine Dion fans in the audience? Sure. Oh. Dylan, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the constellation. Just Dan in the back? Yeah. It's all right. You go. You go. You let them know if you like her. Yeah. <laughs> so Celine Dion and Dan's heart will go on at uh, the Coliseum at Caesars Palace on the, on the 31st, and that starts at 7.30 p.m., so I'm sure I'll see you there, Dan. <laughs> awesome. And if the strip and downtown and all of that is a little too much for you, I'm sure you'll be starting to think about whether or not you can go and see some fireworks somewhere. And the, the cool thing about Vegas is we have the most amazing fireworks, and they are actually set off yeah, on some of, of the fireworks. tallest buildings here so you can check out the fireworks from anywhere you want i think last year i went up to the um there was like a hill on henderson and i got to see like the whole strip kind of near the whole foods area in henderson that was really awesome so they're going to be letting off more than eighty-eight thousand fireworks guys which yeah that's that's a huge number God, a lot of fireworks yeah <laughs> so uh so the, the buildings sky. the buildings that they're going to be like lighting up the sky with uh uh buildings like the mgm grand aria planet hollywood caesar's palace so um it's going to go for eight minutes so that's a lot of fireworks if you divide eighty-eight thousand by eight that's a lot of fireworks a minute so uh, definitely get down for that um and so i think the good views are at the, the strip but you can also see them from downtown okay 
which is really cool. Very cool. So I think there's something in it for everybody, and uh, we wish you a very happy new year. Yeah, That's big parties, small week. parties, mm-hmm. firework parties, <laughs> pajama parties maybe. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. It'll be good. I'll be watching to make sure you're out and not in, not in bed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right, well, thanks, guys. That's the events for this week. excited about this one because the uh, next guest is the director of technical support at Evernote. She was also before that the community manager at Floodgate Entertainment and helped streamline the HR department at the Boston Medical Center. So please put your hands together for Heather Wilde. Thank you. All right. So let's So because you're such an interesting person that dabbles in so many different arts, we could go on for a long time. But I'm going to try to keep this related to a few things that are based around your passion and my passion, which is Evernote. Because I like this product a lot. And I was really excited to hear that you had a history in it. So um, you actually got an endorsement on your LinkedIn account from Phil, the CEO of Evernote. And he said that you untangled many of the thorny problems that they had when they were getting the company off the ground. So tell us, what were those thorny problems? And what are some of the ways that you solve thorny problems that maybe we could use for our startups? Uh, Well, we have so many different thorny problems, it's really hard to pinpoint one particular one. But I'll tell you about how I approach every problem that comes to me. Yeah. Um, Basically, I will take a particular problem, I'll look at it, um, and bring it down to its elements. And I'll just analyze it and figure out, like, generally when something is in front of me, it has always just individual elements there that aren't necessarily on the surface. So you just have to break it down, analyze it, and then you can attack it. So that's how I approach every single thing that I'm doing, and then then you can just find the answer. Okay, well, then, do. What do you mean? So what do, how do you describe analyzing a problem for how to fix it? Like, What is the kind of methodology that you're using and trying to teach to the other Evernote employees? Um, what, what I'll generally do is I'll tell them to um, think through what somebody is actually trying to say, like, will just listen to the problem rather than hear. What, okay. what people are saying isn't always what they mean. So. Oh, really? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Uh, well, sometimes what they sometimes people use a lot of words when they're just trying to cover up one little sentence, one little thought. And what you need to do is keep trying to figure out what that grain of truth is behind all those words. Okay, so you talk about kind of like an unhappy client or a customer or someone that calls you up and you try to get to the bottom of like really what's making them upset, even if it's not right on the surface. That or any problem. This can be applied to anything that you're doing. Okay. So. Yeah, so any any issue that, that comes up with a client, um, a customer, or even just you, maybe just me? talking to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, me talking right now, I'm using a whole lot of words to say analyze. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. All right, well, we'll move on to listening then, because that's, that's, that was the next topic that you seemed really passionate about in our pre-interview. So I get this sense uh, that like, when you talk about people need to listen more, that it kind of has this connotation that's not normally like what I think of as listening. You seem to use it as kind of this thing to build a company around, like Apple did, like try to just listen to what people did and like do it better. You kind of use it as a knowledge shortcut, and then you also kind of talk about knowledge or talk about listening as a skill. So let me know, um, explain like what you mean by listening and like what a good listener really entails. Uh, what I mean by listening is basically sitting back and taking in what the elements around you are. Like, so when people are, I mean, just absorb. So when I, when I say listen, I mean absorb, not, not necessarily okay, yeah, yeah. listen to, or not necessarily, again, hear what, some, what the words that people are saying, but hear what the meaning behind the words. So truly understand, and that's what I mean. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And then, um, so you talked about like one of the things entrepreneurs come across a lot is that they get stressed out. Like they're like, oh, I got all this money on the line. Like my life's on the line. And they're so kind of stuck working on this that they're not maybe listening to people who already have the solution. So talk a little bit about uh, how you would handle the stress and how listening can maybe help with that. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So one of the things that, that entrepreneurs run into is that they get stuck in a corner. They don't understand that there's 
already a great community out there of people that have already handled these problems before or something very similar to them. So they believe that, or when you're stuck in this corner, you think that you're the only one that's ever been there. Right. So if they would just listen and learn from the people that are out there, <laughs> then... Right, the last thing you think to do when you're getting <laughs> slammed is like, I need to just calm down and like go start yeah. absorbing things, but not solve this problem exactly this moment, but try to see if anyone else has solved it. Yeah, so if you can just step back when you're in that corner, then you can absorb everything else and take in that great mentor community that's Do you guys have some good examples at Evernote where you guys weren't looking and then you slowed down and actually got the solution quicker? Uh, it happens all the time. Like uh, Sometimes we work in teams at Evernote, so uh, sometimes we'll be in an isolated team and then uh, we'll be working on a problem and then somebody will just suddenly say, wait a second, maybe the ops team has already encountered this. And then you go and they'll be like, oh yeah, we, we did this last week and then they have the end. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some of, one of the things you said you were passionate about is just always staying educated. Like you seem to really love just learning things. Like you said you want to never really be great at a company once it kind of grows because you like to just keep starting, starting things, getting them all set up and letting them go. Explain where that passion comes from and what it is about learning that you think is motivating to you. Uh, and maybe I, to other people too? I don't know where it comes from. I just always have had it. But um, I I do. I really, I, I read three to five hours a day. I, oh, okay. <laughs> That's just, just, yeah. Outside of work, just doing that. So I love learning a new thing, um, at least one new thing every day. And it's just, I, I just find that if you don't use your brain, if you don't expand that constantly, then you, you just can't keep making those connections uh, to grow as a person. So... Uh, yeah. It's just useful in work because you never know when those connections are going to be. And I actually yeah. had thought about this in, in a meeting I had the other day uh, with our designer, uh, one of our designers at work. Uh, he, he and I were brainstorming about something and then suddenly uh, he said one thing and then it made me realize that Vine got its name because of Vignette. And I hadn't really thought of that oh, before. Oh, when that clicked for you, yeah, you just got just that clicked. dopamine rush, and you yeah, were like, and, "Yeah, that's." And he hadn't, and he was like, <laughs> "I never even thought of like I didn't know about the word vignette, meaning the word that you meant." And he's like, "I didn't mean it in that yeah, way." No, I didn't and, either. Yeah. Yeah. So Vine actually does mean vignette, and I looked it up after that. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jay. How about your fun hanging out? Do you just snap off little facts like that all the time? Yeah, uh, my friend, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> a friend of mine says I have a champagne brain because. It yeah. never knows what's going to bubble up. <laughs> It's good, the champagne brain. That's really funny. Okay, so let me, okay, so I gave you a little bit of homework since you said you kind of like homework and you like learning about things. So I asked you to learn something about the downtown community and not only just tell us what it is that you learned, but walk us a little bit through the process about how you went about kind of with this blank slate, like where did you start diving into questions and how did you formulate your question and then what was the answer? Okay, so um, the you asked me to find out about the uh, ice skating rink at the Gold Spike Casino. Right, Cold, so, Cold okay. Spike we call it in the back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, I found out that it is uh, it was brought in by Tony Shea, and uh, right. it is a synthetic ice rink. And the way that I found out by uh, the way I found out about this was I just started uh, looking about. All right, I started looking up articles on Google, um, where everybody starts, right, uh, <laughs> to find out what I could find, anything at all, about the ice rink. And then um, there wasn't actually very much. It, it was just like, oh, we're about to do this thing. So then I, I yeah. went to it's the pretty new, yeah. I found the manufacturer of the ice rink. Oh, okay. And, uh, Who manufactures it? Uh, I can't remember right okay. now, actually. But I found out, like, I went to who was manufacturing it. It's like a company in New York. Um, and then it was the, like, I found that it was a resin that I actually used to use when I ice skated. Like, so it's plus. Oh, you had, and you happen to be an ice skater? When I was a kid. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so it's synthetic ice skates. Like, you don't ever use your own ice skates on that thing, because they'll ruin, it'll tear it up. <laughs> Just use the rental skates. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a resin, so it's a plastic? Or yeah, is it's, it a, like it's a, a plastic. It'll be good for about four years. Um, and, uh. Yeah, so. OK, it, and did you get that when you kind of figured out what it was made of? Did you get that little moment thing that you like? Yeah, and it was good because I remembered actually skating on these when I was a kid, when I was practicing, so. Oh, OK. <laughs> good, so brought back the memories. Did you go to your Evernote and pull up the old photos and all that stuff? Evernote hasn't been around that long. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyways, but people can check you out. You do. A, it sounds like you have a pretty interesting Twitter feed too. But they can. So you you combined Heather, your first name, and then Ariel from the the, the mermaid, mermaid, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> probably a favorite character of yours or something. So you have, for your Twitter account, you combine the two in the um, Heather Reel. So H E A T H R I E L, and you guys can follow her on Twitter. And then uh, anything else you want to talk about? Any other projects? Uh, yeah, actually, um, Girls in Tech is a group that I'm in here. Yeah, in Vegas. I got Christina this week. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're doing a lot of stuff yeah. next year uh, in 2014. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. So uh, check out Girls in Tech on Meetup and also on Facebook, Girls in Tech Las Vegas. Uh, and you'll find there, uh, we're just, there's a whole lot of things that we're going to be doing. Uh, it's all in progress right now. So. Good. Yeah. 2014 is going to be a fun year. So thank you very much for coming out and talking with us. Everybody check her out online and thank you very much for talking to us about Evernote and great entrepreneurial history. So keep learning everybody. Oh yeah. Okay. Let it, let it soak in. That's the last one for 2013. It is. But it's been good. It is. Okay, so I wanted to bring everybody on. So this is the team that handles a lot of podcasts. We also have Alan still back there working the cameras. But these guys are some of the main Thanks, core Alan. pieces that have helped out, especially in this last quarter. And um, I wanted to thank you guys for coming out. And this is going to be a really exciting 2014, especially with the Inspire Theater coming mm -hmm. up. We have Tony Shea booked as a guest for early next year, probably episode 50, I think, in fact. And um, I wanted to – I already opened them for you, but I wanted you guys to know what <laughs> gifts we got for the podcast. So, awesome. Um, if you can – I don't know if you can turn the camera towards Dylan, but Dylan Simpson, he's a big uh, – big podcast supporter. Huge supporter. Yeah, and he I helps he us just, clean up at yeah. the end of every week. He's always putting our chairs away for us. Right. So he just uh, got back from Africa. I guess he was on a trip there and he brought us these new coasters. So we now have the uh, official awesome. podcast upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this was this year too, right? Like in, this it, was it goes this back. Year. This was a gift that the Sin Shot made for us. Susan and Pavel made that originally. That was February, I think. Hopefully Pavel, Pavel's out of town this week, but he'll be we back We were just soon. trying to scam our way back onto the show. Yeah, but you did, a, you did a damn fine job there, Susan. <laughs> You're back. You're back. I scan my way on every week now, yeah. so thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, if you want to open this, this is from Christina gave this to us, so this is a Girls oh, in Tech gift for the Christina, podcast. Thank so, you. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Thank you so Very much. Cool. Yeah, That's so everybody awesome. go out and yeah. support that. Christina's a huge supporter of the yeah. podcast, too, so thank you. Yeah, and then Sean, thank you for helping out, especially when the, when the cameras turn off. Sean's the one who's talking to the crowd, who's trying to play the games, <laughs> playing the hot potato, and all that stuff. So. And of course, Pavel, who, uh, oh, who cannot Pavel. be with yeah. us, but Pavel is normally a huge crowd warmer as well, and he's in San Francisco flying back into Vegas tonight, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to him and thank him for all yes, the Yes, thank you, Pavel. Right. Oh. Can't wait to have him back. Hopefully, I'll see you guys every and yeah, he's been, he was the robot, if you guys remember with Jen. He, he, makes all, he, he does all the cool stuff that we have. He's like our hardware guy and right. makes so much of the cool. And Alan, our roving, uh, a roving filmer too, he gets all the candid footage along with Sean. So thank you so much, yeah. Alan. Yeah, thank you. Cool. So yeah, then there's been a number of volunteers that came on and off just for episodes, and uh, we appreciate all of them, including Dan is one of them, probably a couple of people in here have taken a turn when we were in desperate need, so thank all of you guys, and we are very much looking forward to having a great Christmas, having a great New Year's, and then uh, having 2014 at the Inspire Theater, so cool. signing off for 2013, thank you guys for coming out, we appreciate it. Vegas, we the hardest, hardest. Yeah. yeah. Our ride, our ride is downtown. We running this. Let's be down for stunning looks. Creeping on and come up to Vegas. Yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers. Remember, like a flashback. Vegas tech. Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.